Hello everyone and welcome to another screencast presentation. Today taking a look at something similar to the last video which is just going to be Dynamo workflows with Revit. So what I want to do today is just take you through some some sort of everyday Dynamo techniques uh, that could be used just in terms of, of modeling. So working a little bit with existing Revit geometry in your project. So for this example I'm going to build just two walls of different heights. One is going to be four meters, one is going to be eight meters. Just like that. And what I would like to do in this exercise is I would like to build a system that is going to allow me to take beams from one wall to another wall. Just like that. So I'm going to design points along the edges of these walls and I'm going to complete those with lines and I'm going to turn those lines into a, a beam system. Okay, And that beam system is going to be fully connected and parametric so it's always a nice uh, technique to be able to do that and again just everyday sort of functionality that you could use Dynamo for. Not overly advanced modeling or anything like that, just something that is actually workable. So I'm going to go ahead and launch Dynamo uh, with my two walls in place over here and the first thing that I generally like to do when working with Dynamo is just I'm going to switch my Revit units quickly to meters just makes working with Dynamo a little bit easier because instead of inputting things like 4000 into Dynamo you can just input the value of 4 which is a little bit easier okay so I'm going to launch a new Dynamo definition and the very first thing that I want to do is just bring my Revit information into Dynamo. So I'm going to go to my Revit section, my node library, selection, and because I've only got two elements, the two walls that I want to work with, I'm going to use this function here called select model elements, which allows me to hit the select button and then physically reach into my Revit model and select two items or however many items I want to work with. So I go back to Dynamo, I'll see that that information has populated into my node over here where I've got two walls and I would just like to see that information here in Dynamo as well. So I'm going to go and I drop in an element geometry node and connect those two up and that allows me to very quickly just recreate my Revit scenario inside of Dynamo. Okay so another very useful Revit selection tool so if I go to my Revit node library again and I go to my selection section I have got the ability to select uh, faces of walls. I've also got the ability to select edges, which is exactly what I'm going to do in this case, because I want to select my two inside edges over here. Okay, These two edges of the walls, I want to select those two because I'm going to be designing points along them so that I can create lines to represent my beams. So I'm going to say select edges, the one with the S, because obviously I've got more than one. And it works exactly the same way as the Select Model Elements node. So I'm going to hit Select, go back to my Revit project. Notice that in my options bar over here, I've actually got uh, a multiple and a little section over here that allows me to finish. That, that, let me know, that lets me know that I've got a tool running at the moment. So I'm just going to select the inside edge and the inside edge, and I'm going to click Finish. If I head back over to Dynamo, I'll now see those two edges uh, in full color over here letting me know that I have them selected and they're now in this node and I can start to work with them. So I can see that this gives me two lines. So I've got start points and end points. I've also got directions and vectors as well. So quite a lot of information that I actually get from this. Okay so uh, a nice way to work in Dynamo as well is actually to, to input your very last node that you want to work with, right? Your, your final result and then work backwards from there. So if I go to my search node section over here and I type in the word beam, okay, this is the creation method that I want to use as my final result here in Dynamo. Structural framing dot beam by curve. Okay, that is going to be the node that physically creates my beam work inside of Revit. So placing that into my workspace allows me to work towards a goal. 
Yeah, I can see that this node requires three inputs, two of which are going to be very easy. Structural framing type, that's just the beam type that I want to use, that's easy. And what level do I want to exist on, that's also very easy. The thing that we need to work towards getting is the curve. Okay, so the curve is the lines or the group of lines that we are going to turn into beams at the end of it. So to get this curve, we, we have to go through a bit of a logical process. Okay, firstly, we know that we want to create uh, beams that are going to be wrapping along the walls like this. Okay, so these lines that I'm drawing out, these red lines, these are our final outputs. That is our list of curves that we want to add here. Okay. But before we're able to build those, we have to start with points. Okay, so the green items are the points that I need to create along this black line that you see here, remember, along the edge of this wall. So I need to create a series of points that I can use as a start point and as an end point to create my line. Okay, so that's going to be my, my sequence. I need to first create my points along this edge and my, my points along this edge. I need to connect them together with a line and then that line can be used to feed into my curve section over here. So I'm going to start off with creating the points. There is a very nice node called point at parameter right here, which allows me to create a series of points along a line. Okay, this requires two inputs, a curve and then something called a parameter. So curves are easy. Okay, they are found here in my select edges uh, node, which I constructed a little bit earlier so I can feed those two edges into this node and when I do that you'll immediately see that I actually get points at either end of these edges and also for now it is important to know that they're at opposite ends that one is on the right hand side this one is on the left hand side then I've got an input here called param so that is short for parameter and the parameter considers the distance of a line so if I take this, this line over here that I've got this edge over here. Okay. Parameter only works between 0 and 1. So we'll take this point over here as being 0. And we'll take this point on this side as being 1. Okay. So that's 1. And this side is 0. Any decimal point in between. Um, basically defines the location of the point along that line. So we're starting at 0 over here, we're ending at 1. If I had to uh, set a parameter, for example, of 0 0.1, my point would likely be right there. 0 0.2 would be there, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5 would be in the center, for example, and so on and so forth. Okay. But what I want to do is I want to create a couple points. I don't want to just have one point. At the moment, you start off with one point, And if I drop in a slider, for example, I will need to just define my settings here, a minimum of 0 and a maximum of 1. Obviously, I can't go to 100. Okay. But if I drop that into my parameter and I start to move it, okay, look what happens to the points in both edges. Okay, as I'm moving it, the point is shifting along. But I'm just creating one point. I want to create a series. Of points over here. So I'm going to disconnect my number slider and instead of just plugging a number slider directly into the point at parameter, I'm going to use a range node to create a range of points. Okay. So my start and end, uh, they are going to be 0 and 1 respectively because remember my parameter can only work between 0 and 1. So I'm going to double click to place a code block and I'm going to put a 0 and I'm going to put a 1. That's a nice thing about code blocks is that you can combine multiple elements into just one node. And then my step, I'm going to plug in my number slider. And maybe I'll also change my step value to a little bit less, maybe 0 0.05. So I can actually have more points to work with. Okay, and I'm going to plug this into my parameter. Okay, I'm going to move my slider over here and I can see my point is adjusting as usual. What I want to do to create a range or a whole bunch of points is I want to change my lacing for my pointed parameter from auto to cross product. When I do that and I adjust my slider, I will see that now not only uh, are the points moving, but as they're getting closer to the edge, they're adding additional points at the beginning. Okay, allowing me to create a range of points 
along that curve. So I've satisfied the first step of my, my curve creation over here. I've got my list of points that I can work with. Okay. So what I need to do now is I need to start creating lines that obviously go from one point to the other point like that. So that's the next step. Okay, so to do that, I can drop in a line. So I'm going to right click, I'm going to start typing line, by start point, end point. Right, so this node requires two inputs, a start point or a list of starting points and an end point or a list of end points. So if I look at my pointed parameter node over here, I'll see that I've actually got two lists of information. If I click on the first list, I can see that this 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, these are all the points found along this edge. And my, my second list is all the points found along this edge. So I need a way of isolating those two lists so that I can supply just list number 0 into start point and list number 1 into end point. So to do that, to isolate lists or isolate basically any sort of information, I can use a, a node called get item at index, okay, where I supply the list and then I supply what is called the index value. So the index, index value is the unique identifier like the zero or the one. Those are the indexes of those lists. Okay, It's the position that those lists are found at. So for my index input over here, I'm going to put zero and I'm going to copy and paste that and I'm also going to put one so that I can isolate them into two separate lists. So I can just double click to place down a code block and I'll put a zero in there, connect that and if I take a look that's just half the information or the first list. So I'm going to grab both of those nodes, I'll move it up a bit and I'm going to copy and paste them. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to then just change my index from zero to one. Okay, so now I've got these two lists as two separate lists in these nodes over here. Okay, so if I if I take these and I plug these, because remember these are lists of points, so if I plug these into my line by start point end point, okay, I will see that the result is as follows. So it, it is doing what I want it to do, but the order of the information is just not in the correct order. So I have to take one of these lists of points, whichever one I want, it doesn't matter, and I just need to reverse the order. Okay, so to do that is actually quite simple. So I'm just going to disconnect the endpoint and I'll use this. So I can right click and start typing the word reverse. And the first option over here just lets me supply a list of information and it will automatically just reverse the order that that list is found in. Okay, so I'll see the Y of 7.753 was lost in the first step, but when I supply it to the reverse list, 7.753 is the first item. Okay, so it very simply just reverses the, the order of information in the list. If I plug that in, that's going to work as expected. Okay, and the way that this is set up uh, using the range node and the curve at parameter, I can adjust the number of points and the spacing of points at any time that I want to. Okay, which is quite a flexible approach as well. So that is the last step that I actually need to do because remember what, what is required um, in my final note over here is a list of lines or a list of curves. Okay, and I have just created that now. So I can plug in my list of lines. Okay, the level, as I said, is quite an easy one. I just right click, start typing out the word level, and this just grabs all of the available levels in your Revit project. So I will just have level one and level two because I'm working with the standard architectural template. So I'll plug level one in there, and then structural framing type, which is just the beam type that I want to use. So I can actually start typing out uh, structural framing, and then I will get a node called structural framing types where I can choose from a list of available beams in my Revit project. I've only got one because the architectural template only comes with one beam loaded in. If I wanted additional beams, I would just load those into Revit before I come here and select this information. Okay, I'll just use that standard beam. I'm fine with that for now. So just to, before I complete that note, just quickly go back to Revit. Okay, we don't have anything in Revit at the moment. As soon as I connect up that last section, and I go back to Revit, I'll notice that all of my beams have now been placed along those points. And the nice thing about this as well is just that because 
the edges of the wall are being used to define the points, if those edges are manipulated in any way, the beams are also going to be manipulated. So if I take this wall and I decide that I need to actually make it longer, okay, all my beams are going to update because that edge is moving and Dy Dynamo and Revit has a dynamic link between the two. So anything that changes in Revit that I've got in Dynamo is also going to change in Dynamo. So if I increase the height of this wall, okay, again, same thing is going to happen. It's going to take some time and then it's going to adjust. Okay, so I've got a fully parametric beam system here that I can manipulate in any way that I want to. Okay, so that is everything that I wanted to, to cover today. Like I said, nothing advanced, just a very basic way of how Dynamo thinks, how it reacts to Revit, and some of the ways that you can actually get your Revit geometry into Dynamo and start working and manipulating it and creating some interesting um, effects and relationships between different items. I hope you found this useful, and thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.